Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm Professor Bob Long. If you're watching this video, it's for one of two reasons. One, you're enrolled in my class. This video is intended for those of you enrolled in my class to learn the information the way that I want you to learn it. I may not be as detailed or I might be more detailed than other instructors. We all do things slightly differently. But I found a system that works and I'm sticking to it. If you're in someone else's class and you stumbled across this on YouTube land, you can use it to understand the concepts, but please learn any and all definitions and the way your instructor wants you to learn it. I'm keeping it super simple, almost like kindergarten simple right now when it comes to, to DNA replication and protein synthesis. Now today's video is going to be on mitosis. Now this video is going to set us up for the laboratory portion of mitosis. In lecture, I want you to know what's happening in each phase of mitosis as we go through them. For lab, I want you to just be able to recognize what the cell would look like from the pictures that I draw of mitosis. When you watch this video for my lecture, you should also watch the video before you watch the video on the slides for mitosis and the models for mitosis. Watch this one, and then when you're done, I will teach you or I will, I will give you examples of how I would ask questions for lecture and how I would ask questions for lab. I have to go over to the lab physically and do a video of the models of the phases of mitosis and the slides what you would be seeing. So this is my lecture video but you should watch it before you watch the lab videos on mitosis. Okay, so. The process of our cells dividing, as I stated previously in another video when it came to DNA replication, when you started off life, dad's sperm provided 23 chromosomes. If you watch that video, you know that's my funny abbreviation, that funny X is my abbreviation for the word chromosome. And mom's egg had 23 chromosomes called the oocyte and the sperm. When those two cells fuse, they formed a single-celled person that had 23 pairs of chromosomes, 23 from dad, 23 from mom. Sometimes you express some of these genes on these chromosomes, sometimes you express some of these genes from these chromosomes, and that's why you have some of the traits and characteristics of whoever the father was and whoever the mom was, or the sperm donor and the egg donor, all right? Now, Today, you're about 100 trillion cells. How do we go from one cell to 100 trillion cells? Well, the process is the cell splits into two and the division of the cell is called mitosis. There's another type of cell division called meiosis. We're not gonna talk about it right now. And what happens is this cell will literally divide into two cells. Each will have 23 pairs of identical chromosomes. When I say identical, it means they're identical to the ones that were in this cell. And this one will have 23 pairs of identical chromosomes. Meaning they're identical to these 23 pairs and those 23 pairs. So we take one cell, we have to copy the DNA arrange it properly, and then separate into two separate cells. The whole process is referred to as mitosis. So I'm gonna go through the steps or the phases of mitosis with you, sort of across the board here, and I'm gonna draw what the cell would look like. I'm gonna give a verbal description of what's going on, and then we'll go to the next phase and the next phase and the next phase. So this process of dividing the cells, called mitosis, involves a lot of complicated steps. I'm gonna simplify as much as I possibly can and get down to the bare bones of what you need to know. There's far more going on. When you read the chapter, you'll see all the other details. And it's even far beyond that when you get into cell biology. We could spend an entire semester or two or five talking about every detail of what's going on in mitosis and we don't have that time. So I'm gonna erase this. We're interested in what's going on between here and resulting in these two cells. And these cells are gonna be clones of each other and have the exact same DNA. Now, <clears throat> there are five phases 
or some people call them the stages of mitosis. We very often refer to them as phases. I'm gonna use a different color because all my black markers are either fading or the ones that are good are too hard to erase. But the five stages of mitosis are interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Inter means between, so it's the phase between cell divisions. Pro means sort of before, so this happens before all the really important stuff. Meta means above and the cell starts looking different. Ana means uh, up or with, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but Tilo always means end, and it's the end phase. So those are the five phases of mitosis. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. If you take the first letter of each, you can come up with a cool sentence, and um, I learned this from my anatomy teacher. I passed my anatomy test. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Because a famous question about this is always, please put the phases of mitosis in correct order. And we can list them one, two, three, four, five, and you have to put them in order and find the answer A, B, C, D, E. So. Know the phases of mitosis in order. Now, in each phase of mitosis, there's some specific things that are happening inside the cell. And I'm gonna draw each phase out. So, I'm gonna put up here, I'm gonna draw a cell, and I'm gonna write the name of the phase, and I'm gonna write the details. The details that I write are the questions for lecture. During which phase of mitosis does this happen? During which phase of mitosis does this, and that, and the other? The visual pictures are to set us up for the laboratory so that when you see the models and you see the slides, you know what's going on. So, when we look at our cells under a microscope, I'm going to see this. I'm going to see the nuclear envelope, I'm sorry, the cell membrane, and I'm going to see the nuclear envelope. I'm going to make a really large, large nucleus and we're going to skip all the other organelles even though they're in there. Now, our cells have 46 chromosomes, or 23 pairs of them. I'm only going to use three different colors. I'm going to have a red chromosome, and literally you can draw a big red squiggle in here in any way, shape, or form you want. I'm going to have a blue chromosome. You can put a blue squiggle in there. And let's say we have a, I don't know, green chromosome. It looks like a bowl of spaghetti in there. And that's exactly what's going on. And I'm gonna put these two little red things next to each other at right angles. Those are my centrioles. This is my nuclear envelope. And those are my chromosomes. Now before I go any further, chromosomes can exist in two forms. So it's kind of fortunate for me that someone left something here in the classroom. but. I have a wire here, and let's say this wire has letters written on it, and there's a message on here. When I want to read it, I have to uncoil it, and I can read the message from one end to the other. The wire is going to be a chromosome, and all the letters written on here are going to be the bases on my chromosome. Now, what if I want to transport this wire and 45 other wires, 23 pairs of them? I have to coil them up and make it easier to carry them around so that now I can move the wire around. For example, if you have a wire, a drawer full of wires at home and you grab a wire and pull it, what happens? They all come out together in one giant knot. Actually a better example would be this. If I have a bunch of information written on pages here. And rather than have the pages bound, like your, like your um, note set, at the spine by a coil, since this is a chromosome and every page is a gene, and I might need to build this protein, so I need to be reading this gene, 
and I might need this protein and this protein and this protein all at the same time, I can't be reading all the genes with all these different pages open. We'd be fighting each other. But what if the book were fan folded like this? What if the first page was folded over on the second page and then those were folded over this way? So instead of having them bound up on the spine, the pages are fan folded. I think most of y'all know what green bar paper is from a computer that's fan folded like this and it stacks up this way, nice and neat, and you could carry it around. And when you need to read it, I could unfold it and start reading all the information on all of the pages. When I need to transport it around, I can fold it back up. So now, imagine if this book were put together this way. When I need to read pages out of the book, I can, instead of trying to read seven pages at once, what if I unfold the book this way? Now I can be transcribing this gene and that gene and that gene and that gene all at the same time so I can make multiple proteins all at once. Now, this book is 170 something pages. So now, what if I actually had each page of the book and I fan folded them the way that this piece of paper is, as, as an example, when I need to read the book, I would unfold all 170 pages and lay it across a long table. And I could have someone over here transcribing an RNA polymerase, transcribing this gene, and one transcribing this gene and that gene, and so on and so forth. Now, there's 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs. So now, what if I had that entire fan fold at 170 pages, but 46 times? When you get ready to move, so let's say we leave this classroom and I ask you to go three buildings over to the second floor, to this specific room, and then I want you to start building some proteins. Well, if you had all of these pages, 100 and so pages long, and you were dragging them behind you across campus, they might get wet, they might get stepped on, they might get torn and damaged. And when you get to your location, you wouldn't be able to make the proteins. So when you get ready to transport the books around, you simply coil them up or fold them up like this. It's the same pages. But when they're coiled up like this into a dense ball, we call it a chromosome. When I uncoil it, the same piece of DNA is called chromatin. So, if this cable were all of those pages, then this is a piece of chromatin. When I coil the DNA up so that I can transport it, I don't need to read it right now, I just need to move it around. Then I have what's called a chromosome. It's the same piece of DNA. But when I'm moving DNA around, I coil it or condense it into chromosomes. When I need to read it to build proteins or copy things, then I uncoil the DNA back into chromatin. I coil it up as a chromosome, I uncoil it back into chromatin. I coil it up as a chromosome to move it, I uncoil my chromosome into chromatin so I can read it. So we're constantly doing this in our cells depending on if we're reading the DNA or if we're moving the DNA around. So during protein synthesis, I'm sorry, during mitosis, when we're in interphase, there are some details that we must pay attention to. Now, our cells spend their entire life in interphase unless they're going to divide by mitosis and they're building proteins and doing normal cellular function. And interphase is, is divided in S1, you know, uh, S2, G0. There's different subphases of interphase. You can read about that if you want. I'm not gonna get into that level of detail right now. Here's what you need to know what happens during interphase. The nuclear envelope is intact. Meaning I can see the nuclear envelope, it appears. DNA is in the form that we call chromatin.
and normal cellular function occurs. So, during interphase, the cell is undergoing its normal cellular function, making proteins, digesting things, exocytosing and endocytosing, and doing what it does every day. The DNA is usually in the form of what we call chromatin, all uncoiled and floating around like a bunch of pieces of spaghetti in a pot, and the nuclear envelope is intact. Now, one more thing is going to happen in interphase, but only if we need it to. So I'm going to put a little asterisk here. If dividing then DNA replication occurs. DNA replication will occur only if the cell is going to divide by mitosis. This does not happen if the cell doesn't need to divide. But if the cell is going to divide, then we have to go through the steps that we did of DNA replication. DNA polymerase has to uncoil and unzip the strand and start adding complementary bases and copying the DNA. Once the DNA is copied, the cell must progress through the rest of the phases of mitosis or it will have too many chromosomes and have all sorts of problems. So essentially what's going to happen is if the cell is going to divide, and you don't need to do this to your drawing, but I'm going to go in and make a second copy of my green chromosome. I'm going to make another copy of my blue chromosome. I'm going to replicate the DNA, and I would make another copy of the red chromosome. Once that occurs, the cell will progress into the next phase of mitosis. Now, what, I'm going to draw the picture of the cell during this phase of mitosis, and we'll write out what's happening. Here's the cell membrane. I've drawn the nuclear envelope as a series of dashes because the cell starts breaking down the nuclear membrane and storing it as little bubbles of membrane and vesicles and things. <coughs> and what I will see is my copy of my DNA strand is going to get condensed. So not only am I going to do this, I'm going to take my DNA as in the form of chromatin and I'm going to make an identical copy of this piece of DNA. And then I'm going to take these two identical copies and I'm going to condense them down. And so that I don't lose track of them and get them confused with other pieces of DNA, why not make sure, okay, listen, this is chromosome number one, this is the copy of chromosome number one, condensed. What if I took something like some chewing gum or something sticky and I stuck these two next to each other so that... They look like two funky little X's floating around held together. But now I don't lose them. So that when the cell divides, I don't get my pages mixed up. So now, that's what's exactly going to happen. In the next phase of mitosis, which is called prophase, I'm going to condense the chromatin into chromosomes and put the two pieces of DNA that match each other next to each other and stick them together and I have to break down the nuclear envelope. And the third thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna see the centrioles start moving to opposite poles of the cell. So if I were to write out what's occurring during prophase, I would say this. The nuclear envelope is broken down. Now it's far more complex than that, but we break it down into little bubbles of membrane and package it up and move them around so that we can reassemble the nuclear envelope later on when we need it. The chromatin is condensed into chromosomes. And centrioles migrate to opposite poles or opposite ends of the cell. Our cell is going to have poles like the earth has a north pole and a south pole. And what I would see inside the nucleus is this. I would see a piece of my 
red chromosome coiled up and attached to the other copy of the red chromosome. I'll have my two copies of my blue chromosome next to each other, attached to each other, and I'll have the two copies of my green chromosome attached to each other. Now, there's a lot of language that will be in the textbook that says each chromosome now consists of two chromatids. There's a chromatid here and a chromatid there. They're the two pieces of DNA. And they are sister chromatids, because they're related to each other, that are attached to each other at a centrally located kinetochore or centromere. So there's a little structure that holds them together called the centromere. That's all that we need to know for now. So if I look at the cell, I can see this. The nuclear envelope is being broken down. The chromatin is condensed into chromosomes. Each chromosome consists of two chromatids, which are identical copies of each other, attached to each other at a centrally located kinetochore or centromere. We don't need all that detail. The chromatin is condensed into chromosomes. And the centrioles begin migrating the opposite poles. Now, if you read the textbook, there's a lot more stuff going on than this. But this is what you need to know for now. Now I'm going to run out of space on the board because of the way the camera can focus and how big I need to write for you to see. But we're going to progress through the phases. When I run out of room, I'm going to erase these phases and I'll draw the details. Okay? So now, when we get to the next phase of mitosis, I'm going to draw the cell membrane. I don't even draw the nuclear membrane. It's completely broken down and disappeared. But something happens with the chromosomes. There's some chemistry and some biochemistry and some biophysics that go on. But essentially what happens is my red chromosome, my blue chromosome, and my green chromosome, each with their sister chromatids, will line up at the center of the cell. And as the centrioles reach opposite poles, they begin assembling these little protein sticks that are going to attach to each copy of a chromosome. Those are called spindle fibers. And essentially what happens is they are proteins and we take all these little proteins and we assemble them like this and as I assemble them they will get longer and longer and longer. And then if they had a little hook on them, I could hook onto my belt and grab onto one copy of a chromosome and the other sister chromatid would be facing this way and the other centromere, uh, sorry, centriole will build spindle fibers and attach and then they will pull in opposite directions and pull those two copies of the chromosome or sister chromatids apart. So if I wanted to write out the details of what's happening in this phase, this phase would be called Metaphase. And in metaphase, here's what's happening. The chromosomes, each consisting of two sister chromatids attached to the centromere, line up. Now, our book will say things like the chromosomes line up near the center of the cell called the equatorial plane or the metaphase plate or whatever. Well, just like our Earth, the cell has an equator, so to speak. So they'll call this the metaphase plate or equatorial plane. But essentially, if you see chromosomes line up, blah, 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 it doesn't matter what the rest of the stuff is. Once the chromosomes line up, we are in metaphase. And the other thing we can say is that centrioles reach opposite poles and attach spindle fibers to each chromatid at the centromere. That's supposed to be my abbreviation for the word at. At the centromere. I left the word D out. But that's what's happening here. The chromosomes have lined up at the metaphase plate or the equatorial plane. The centrioles have reached opposite poles, assembled spindle fibers, and attached those spindle fibers to each sister chromatid at the centromere. That's what happens in metaphase. This is what I will ask in lecture. 
during which phase of mitosis is the nuclear envelope broken down, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes, and centrioles begin migrating to opposite poles. Prophase. In lab, you're going to look at a model or a microscope slide, and you're going to go, okay, I see the chromosomes, but they're not lined up. Must be prophase. Oh, I see the chromosomes lined up. Must be metaphase. Oh, I see the nuclear envelope and not a lot going on. Must be interphase. So now, during interphase, we replicate the DNA. In prophase, we condense the chromosomes. In metaphase, we line the chromosomes up. I'm running out of board space, so let me erase what's happening here, and let's go on to the next phase. Again, I would be continuing in a straight line this way, and so this would be the next picture. Again, I'm gonna draw the cell membrane. I don't draw the nuclear envelope because it's still broken down, but here's what's gonna happen. My blue chromosome is gonna be broken into two individual chromatids and each chromatid now is a complete chromosome which is some confusing language I get that but nonetheless now this chromatid here and this chromatid each make up a chromosome of two chromatids when I separate it now I have chromosomes two chromosomes each consisting of one chromatid I know that's some confusing language but essentially here's what happens okay my centrioles, after they've assembled those long pieces of, DNA, of protein called spindle fibers, begin to break down the spindle fiber and retract it and start reeling in the spindle fibers, so to speak. <coughs> Excuse me. And the chromosomes are being separated, each chromatid being pulled to opposite poles of the cell. So if I wanted to talk about what's happening here, this is called anaphase. In anaphase, centrioles retract spindle fibers. The chromosomes are separated into chromatids or sister chromatids, which are now individual chromosomes, which is confusing. But, and you can see that this describes the major things happening here. Now in late anaphase, they'll start reaching opposite poles and start to uncoil and the membrane will start pinching in, but we're not doing the earlies and lates. I know some instructors get into early anaphase and late anaphase, early prophase, late prophase. I'm not doing the early late stuff. You can add those details in. You need to understand the steps of mitosis. So now we're going to be at the last phase of mitosis, which is going to be telophase. So, and the only way for you guys to learn this is again, learn to draw the picture as if you had to stand at a chalkboard or a marker board for a group of seventh graders and teach them this stuff. Now, when we get to the last phase of mitosis, we're going to see that the cell starts doing this. We see the nuclear envelope starting to form, and we see the cell pinching in half. And inside the nucleus of each one of these, eventually we will replicate the centrioles. We're not gonna worry about that. But I will start to uncoil my red DNA back into chromatin. I'm gonna uncoil the blue chromosome back into chromatin. And I'm gonna uncoil my green piece of DNA into chromatin. If I wanted to write out the steps of what's happening, this is called telophase. In telophase, what's going to happen is chromosomes reach opposite poles and uncoil into chromatin. The nuclear envelope is reassembled. 
or some books say that it reappears because we take all those little bubbles of membrane and put them back together and we start forming the nuclear envelope and we can say cytokinesis occurs that is the cell pinching in half or into two this process of the cell pinching in is called cytokinesis. So, in telophase, I can see the chromosomes have reached each end of the cell and they start to uncoil back into chromatin. So again, in prophase, I condense the chromatin into chromosomes. Once I've moved them, I can uncoil the chromosome back into chromatin. That happens in telophase. The nuclear envelope is reassembled and cytokinesis occurs. Now, as we said before, because lipids can stick to lipids, I can pitch the cell membrane in half and seal it into two bubbles. If I were to watch this process under a microscope, we would keep adding pieces of nuclear envelope until the nuclear envelope is completely formed and the cell membrane pinches across until it completely pinches in half. And now I have two identical daughter cells that if I could look back at the original picture, I had to erase it, would look identical to this and has the exact same genetic composition. The whole process is called mitosis, the process of the cell dividing. It occurs in five phases, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. For lecture, you need to know what I wrote down here. During which phase of mitosis do chromosomes reach opposite poles of the cell and uncoil or uncondense back into chromatin? The nuclear envelope is reassembled, forming two new nuclei, and cytokinesis occurs. And you'll see the answer choices, and you would pick During which phase of mitosis are chromosomes separated into daughter chromatids? If you see chromosomes separated, it must be anaphase. During which phase of mitosis do the chromosomes line up? Metaphase. During which phase of mitosis is the DNA replicated as the cell is undergoing normal cellular function and the nuclear envelope is intact? That would be interphase. So you need to be able to know what's happening in each phase verbally. In lab, we'll just look at pictures and you go, oh, that's telophase, that's anaphase. The chromosomes are lined up, it's metaphase. Now, I hated mitosis when I was in high school the first time I saw it. And I took uh, two years of high school biology because I was interested in this stuff. And I took the honors class. And every time I saw it until I got to college, I was good at memorizing and making A's and forgetting. But I realized now I needed to learn the stuff. And one of my classmates taught me what her teacher taught her, which, which is called the mitosis cheer. Your hands represent what's happening with the DNA. If you put your hands at your sides, you're in interphase. You can't see the chromosomes because it's chromatin and the nucleus is, in, is there. In prophase, the chromosomes condense and it will look like a dark ball inside the nucleus. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up. In anaphase, the chromosomes are separated. And in telophase, you form two new nuclei and the cell divides. You go back into interphase. Interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, interphase, chromatin, prophase, the chromosomes condense, metaphase, chromosomes line up, anaphase, the chromosomes are separated, telophase, you form two new nuclei and the cell divides. Go back to interphase. And the daughter cells will stay in interphase unless one or both need to divide. And if this cell decides it's going to divide, it will go through all the phases of mitosis and divide. When the other cell decides to divide, whenever it gets the chemical signal, it will go through all the phases of mitosis and separate. And every daughter cell will have the exact same genetic makeup. Interphase, chromatin in the nucleus. Prophase, chromatin condenses into chromosomes. Metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, metaphase plate. Anaphase, the chromosomes are separated by the centrioles and telophase, two new nuclei form and the cell divides by cytokinesis. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you learned something. I hope this was easy to follow. Please like and subscribe or send me comments if you liked it, if I need to edit it. I'm going to redo these videos 
when I have the ability to edit them, but I am in a time crunch, so they're one take, they're the best I can do for now. So, I'll see you on the flip side, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.